Good morning, Maryland. I'm Christian Schaefer coming to you on the WMAR 2 News Facebook page, and I'm joined by Jordan Jersey, who is a certified nurse practitioner at GBMC, and we're here to talk about some extremely common problems that people have in America in 2019, high blood pressure and cholesterol. Good morning, and thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thanks for having me. It's, a, it's an interesting discussion because so many people have these problems. One of the stats I looked up looked like about a third of Americans of American adults have these issues. Yes, it's out of control at this point with obesity on the upper hand and patients are just not coming in and getting the health care they need. The obesity is probably the number one thing that's really starting to up where we see other chronic illnesses. When does it come to a point where a person um, thinks they should come in and actually get some real serious help? Honestly, before they have any problems, you could be as healthy as a horse, just come in. I mean, that's the whole point of preventative medicine and that's really what healthcare is shifting into. I think we used to wait a lot until there was a problem, but now we want you to come in just for your annual routine physical and just getting routine blood work is really helpful to know that you are healthy. And then if everything looks good, we wait a year. I wonder if uh, there's a lot of people who don't even get that annual physical, which scares me because I know there's a lot of people who don't. And I can vouch that that's true. I have patients who say this is my first appointment in 10 years and they're in their 60s. Wow. So that's when I know we have a lot of work to do, but it's also exciting because I know we'll be able to get a hold of anything as soon as we can. And then some things that can be frustrating for patients, I'm guessing, is if they want to start something but they don't necessarily see results right away. Yeah, so that that gets difficult. I think people expect results right away, like how weight loss is, and if you don't get it, you quickly give up. So that's kind of where I do a close follow-up. I'll recommend a six to three month follow-up, even sooner for some people if they like to be held accountable. So that way, it's not a punishment where we get on the scale and yell at you for your numbers, but it's a way that we can chart it and document it and just keep staying on top of it. And same goes for the blood pressure and high cholesterol. So you mentioned the numbers. So just for the record, let's run it down for you. Uh, if you're concerned about your cholesterol or even if you're a healthy person at this point, um, what sorts of numbers should you be looking at and what's the difference between the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol, all that? That's a good question. So. We would start out with a lipid panel, and that tells you your total cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, which is the bad, and then the HDL, which is the good. So all of us have cholesterol, naturally. We have it from our food, and our body produces it, and it's in our bloodstream. So for some people, if the diet is the problem, the cholesterol can skyrocket from that. For some people, it can be hereditary, where we're just predisposed to having higher numbers. So we'll get that basic panel, we'll look at what we're working with, and if there's just a slight elevation in the LDL, we usually can control it through diet and exercise. Um, also, a lot of times we'll see a low HDL, and again, that's the good kind. So that's where I can say exercise will literally raise that up. So getting aerobic exercise in three to four times a week should help, and also some dietary changes. What are some of the problems that might come, or that might be caused by having a, a, the bad cholesterol being too high. Like what, what does that cause inside of your body? Sure, so you almost wanna think of a plaque building up. So in the vessel, you want the vessels to be clear. And I'm sure patients have heard about people who needed triple bypasses um, in their heart because of heart attacks and everything. So cholesterol over time will build and become plaque in the vessel, basically causing a narrow valve and then that's also where high blood pressure comes in and if that's already elevated and you're working with strict valves then we have we're just asking for a heart attack so and it sounds like dangerous when you describe it that way it sounds like it might be frightening for some people mm -hmm. um, but i think it's important to tell them that if they do do things that are recommended and do the right thing that those numbers can actually change and it, it really does work i have had it with my patients now where it comes in we're both kind of worried when we look at it together, but as we work together as a team, um, the numbers do come down. And I typically wait at least three months is good to check every three months to see the progress. Checking before that can sometimes not give you the results you want to see. So um, it really does work. It, it, patients don't like having to be on a medication. A lot of times it, it can be temporary where we just stabilize you and get you into a safer range. So in addition to changing diet and exercise, at times mm -hmm. there are medications that lower. Absolutely, and sometimes 
they are indicated um, just to keep the patient safe. We really have to, to do it at times and patients will complain about the side effects, especially with the statins associated with cholesterol. So that's one of the big things I hear all the time is that it causes the muscle aches. So I can work with you. I will sometimes offer to do an every other day treatment plan. That way we're still getting the medication. It's still going to be effective. Um, and it's not like we're giving up alt ultimately on it. Joined by Jordan Jersey from GBMC, a certified nurse practitioner who works with patients who need to lower their cholesterol and watch their high blood pressure as well. Without getting too much in the weeds uh, and explaining human anatomy too much, how does exercise raise the person's good cholesterol? That might be, because when people think of cholesterol, I think they think about food most likely. Yes. But how, so if you, if you do do some exercise, that can actually raise your good cholesterol, which you want. Yes, it really does. So we want the good cholesterol, the HDL, to be above 40. So for people who come in and they live a sedentary lifestyle, they're overweight, their HDL might be low in the 30s, but that LDL could be sky high. Um, that's not counting the triglycerides, which are a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So the HDL can come down through certain foods like the healthy, the healthy fats, salmon, avocados, nuts, and then the bad foods, that's where you come in for the LDL, like the potato chips and the fat, if you read your labels where it has the saturated fats, monosaturated, all the different things. You're, what you're trying to tell me is that what you <laughs> eat actually has an impact on your numbers. It really, really good. does. It does. And I think that's just so hard for us. It's at the grocery store, it's just so much easier to grab the cheaper and more well, tasty. Drive through line. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. very quick and easy to do. Yes. And yeah. it, it's killing us. Wow. So, um, what I, I've got a question on here from Barbara, and she says she did not like being on a statin. Um, she has switched over to what she would consider more natural. Uh, treatments or maybe she's saying red yeast rice things like that like sure. almost trying to work with it on her own self is that an option for people to do even as part of a program where they're seeing a professional yes yeah, so absolutely if you're seeing a professional I would actually think that's that's great uh, It's adjunctive therapy so adding things other than just statins can be helpful but some of those are not FDA approved so that's where you would need to come in and at least talk to your doctor about what you plan to take. Mm -hmm. There's so many things out there that say in very small text, not FDA approved. And there's so many things you can buy at the grocery store, like the vitamins and minerals and things like that, yeah. but you might not necessarily know exactly how, how that's going to work with to you. Take. So the red yeast rice does, uh, I have had patients with some success, but it's usually in addition to another medication or with strict diet and exercise. Right, so it can be a part of a plan mm -hmm. over a period of time as well. Exactly. Um, talk about what it's like for a patient who has both elevated cholesterol and also problems with high blood pressure. Um, yeah. how, how serious of a health problem can that be? In other words, is it urgent that they would come in and talk to somebody? Yeah, absolutely. Um, having just one requires a, a doctor's visit, I'd say. So having multiple comorbidities does increase your risk of coronary artery disease and a heart attack and stroke. So coronary artery disease is where we talked about the plaque is kind of building up in the vessels. And then that's what ultimately can lead to the stroke because the plaque can break off and cause a clot to the brain and then also in the heart. Mm -hmm. So really coming in and getting seen for both. One, there's something called a atherosclerotic cardiovascular calculator. I don't have and to say that later, do I? <laughs> no. There won't be a test. Good. So the calculator looks at the patient's age, their cholesterol, their most recent blood pressure, their race, because race actually does have a um, factor in all of this. So all of those factors can give you an estimated score of your, of your risk. Mm -hmm. And if the risk is elevated above five, then you want to start eliminating risks by adding a blood pressure medication or a statin. It sounds like some of the changes that people might make to their lifestyles could impact things like just their weight and their overall general appearance anyway. And in the meantime, you're also helping your numbers go down. Right, yeah. yeah. That's, people have to take charge and a lot of times we don't just start with the medication. I, I don't want to scare people to right. make them afraid of coming in. So really we will, even if the numbers are high, we will work with you at first and see what we can do just through the diet. Mm -hmm. But in many cases it does wind up being that a medication, even if they aren't 
excited about taking it, at times that can work and that can help. Yes, too. Yeah. absolutely. So uh, what is the number that people should be concerned about when it comes to cholesterol? That's a really good question. So typically the total cholesterol we want under 200, mm -hmm. but that actually can be a little different for those with diabetes um, and high blood pressure. Like I said, it's kind of like the perfect storm. So if you have diabetes, we want the LDL even lower, lower than you or I if we don't have diabetes. So I would shoot for 70. Hmm. For, the LDL, for the LDL, the bad cholesterol. Yes. So there's a ratio, and I, have, I know patients have asked about that. Mm -hmm. The ratio looks at how much LDL you're having in comparison to the HDL. And that's where I talked about if you increase the exercise, the HDL could come up, and that helps to lower the LDL. When, when you talk about the number actually going down, mm -hmm. I mean, is that, does that mean inside your body and inside your blood vessels that the bad cholesterol is actually going away? Is that what that means? So, yeah, sometimes that's a great question, too. Sometimes the damage has been done right. as far as the plaque buildup, but not always. And what we'll want to do is just prevent it from getting any worse. So yes, the numbers, we can do an advanced cholesterol panel that looks at even more specifics than just the normal lipid panel. Mm -hmm. So for somebody like you where we're just screening, we would just start out with the basic panel. But down the road, if you were on medicine and we really wanted to monitor how you were doing, we would go ahead and do that advanced panel that tells us about the size of the cholesterol in the bloodstream, how much particles are in the blood, so yes. So there's more detailed tests that can be done beyond what you might get at, like say, a wellness screening at your job. Absolutely. There's much more detailed yes, stuff out there. Yes. Interesting. Um, now, what about kids? Do you do you see them in your practice at all, or, or is that? Unfortunately, I don't. I am certified to see from birth up right. until death, but at our practice, we see 18 and older. So I can help give some advice to patients with their family members, but um, I do hope to one day incorporate seeing kids at our practice. Because it's becoming an issue for younger people as well. Yeah, and it, it always has been in some cases because there are some hereditary or uh, defects where you're born with something. So that if a child has high blood pressure, that is actually a red flag and you shouldn't chalk it off to being family history right away. You'd want them to probably see a cardiology pediatrician to rule out some other malformation in the renal system. Right, and so th the good news is uh, it seems like more younger people do get more re regular medical checks than adults do. Yes, I think it's the help of the parents getting their kids right. to go, getting the kids to go, and then it's just as we get older, we become busy, we make excuses, put family first. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people say, oh, I'm taking care of my mom, but I also have my family. So that's a big thing with the baby boomers and the older generation. Yeah, and they need to take care of themselves as well yes. at the same time. Uh, Barbara had a question about a CT artery scan, said she was mildly arthrosclerotic with calcium. She's also have osteoporosis and takes calcium mm. to deal with that. So she's concerned, she's read up on a vitamin K2. Um, th so, there sounds like there needs to be a balance here. So the cal, uh, that's great. I'll kind of point out a couple things in her question. So the atherosclerosis is what I'm using the word plaque, just so everyone understands. Mm -hmm. So that is the buildup in the arteries. She's got that. Okay. Right. So. The CT calcium score is a newer test that we're ordering that's really good, especially for patients who have a family history, if they've had brothers or sisters who've died at a young age of a right. heart attack. That is a test that you should ask your doctor or provider about because what it does is it looks at your heart and it can actually quantify how much calcium buildup is in the arteries. And by calcium, it's kind of the plaque. Mm -hmm. So the last part of her question was... She was dealing with, uh, she's read up on a vitamin called K2, and uh, it's just one of those supplements that she feels might be able to help her with that balance as far as she needs to take calcium, but she's concerned that she's already got it in, in so her. So I would suggest that she bring it in mm -hmm. and so we can see it, because there's just so many things out there. Um, and again, if she has a cardiologist and she has high risk, it's something you want to check with as far as the supplements. Ultimately, if the calcium score did show high and there is some plaque there, mm -hmm. being on a statin would be most effective. So even with 
you know, and then it's that balance of talking to your doctor and your nurse practitioner about, because you might be taking, now you're taking several different drugs yeah. and coordinating all that at the same time. Yes, so we want to make sure that there's no medication interactions. A lot of times with vitamins, that can be where we see a lot of the interactions. So we've talked a lot about cholesterol so far here with Jordan Jersey from GBMC. We haven't talked quite as much about high blood pressure, uh, but you deal with patients that have high blood pressure. Oh yeah, in that's probably practice. one of the most common things. It is, yeah. and it's, it's something where, um, I wonder if it's something that people feel like they can prevent from happening in the first place, uh, or once you get it, can you ever stop having yeah. it? Really? Yeah. So preventing it, I would say, would be just following like a farm to table kind of diet. So really? the fresher, not necessarily the fresher, but it needs to be not preserved, not, not so easy for us. So the harder it takes to make your meal, that's probably the best because we know what's going in it. We are the ones putting the spices in. So if you're getting things prepackaged or hmm. like to go from. Are you concerned about some of the preservatives that are in their food or is this more of a salt issue for, well, for a lot that's, of that Well, I guess stuff? I was talking more so on the salt issue mm. and, but yeah, the preservatives are a real thing. So organic food can be expensive and that's one way to hunt, kind of prevent that. I know that Aldi's is one of the discount grocery stores that is becoming, they're popping up all over and they do offer a pretty good line of organic foods that for produce that is helpful for people who are on a budget. Do you have, uh, when patients come in, can you help them create that type of a diet as well as part of their treatment program that yeah. might involve drugs or whatever? I have pamphlets that I give patients and I can, I would say most of the providers, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, they, everyone has their own thing. So I actually have documents I made up with my blood pressure, my goal, my current numbers with the cholesterol, and it's kind of a take home sheet so that they can have it on their fridge almost as a mm -hmm. reminder. So that's a good, a good way for people to remember. If you, you should probably just go and get your blood pressure checked, right? I yeah. mean, but if you haven't, are there symptoms that you might have high blood pressure? So unfortunately there's really not, and that's what's the most scary I would think is because you don't know, and I'll have a patient come in and their blood pressure will be as high as 160 over 100, and I'm like, you okay? And they're fine. So I've had people tell me they get a headache in the back of the head. They may have some slight vision changes, but at that point, if you're having a headache or vision changes, then there's something a little more serious going on. That's literally less blood flow. Right. So So it sounds like the, the disconnect between the concern people have versus the concern they ought to have might be yeah. pretty big. And you can buy blood pressure cuffs. You don't need a prescription, although if you come in, we can give you one. That way you can get the cuff at your pharmacy for a little cheaper. Mm -hmm. But you can go to a store today and buy one. And it's dangerous if you're not monitoring it. If you, if you have high blood pressure and you're not keeping I would, track Yeah, I would say because it can fluctuate. People can go into hypertensive crisis depending on what they're eating. So I, I would say, yes, it can be very dangerous. And if you're on medication, you do want to be checking your blood pressure too because sometimes we have to go up or down. I've had people come in with low blood pressure. Right. I have uh, Lisa Ann who's a uh, fan of Good Morning Maryland. Good morning, Lisa Ann. <laughs> and, and one of the things that she's saying is that when she goes to the doctor mm -hmm. uh, to get checked, her blood pressure tends to go up. Oh, gosh, and I'm wondering yeah. if she's concerned you know, about it and that so does that actually have an impact? That, there, that has, uh, we have to differentiate really if it's high just because you're nervous in the office right. or if it's high at home. And a lot of times it's hard for patients to know hmm. because they don't necessarily feel nervous, but coming in for that type of appointment can. It does happen. So yeah, well that's something we call white coat syndrome. And what we'll do it, for me, I will actually give my patients, that's where I say really go home and get the cuff. Mm -hmm. And that way when you're home, you're relaxed, first thing in the morning, go ahead and check. and. For some people, it can still be high then, but just monitor it, keep track, and then have come back if you're still getting elevated numbers. For the record, Jordan did not wear the white coat today, so I'm, I'm feeling very <laughs> comfortable at the table right now. No, <laughs> no white coat syndrome here. Um, but if somebody's, is, is that genetic? Can someone's, if their parents might have had high blood pressure, might they also have high blood pressure? Yes, mm -hmm. it can be. So I would say if your parents had it, you'd want to be checked if you haven't been already. And the, the 
actual foods that deal with high blood pressure, I think we always associate it with salt. Uh, is there anything else that people can, be, should be concerned about or is salt just so prevalent that it really well, is an issue? I guess you have to look at your diet in a whole. If you're eating really bad foods, fatty foods as well, and you're gaining weight, then it can rise on the blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So salt ultimately is the driving factor. So what we recommend for someone without hypertension, a diet with less than 2,300 milligrams a day. But most of us are going well above that into the 3000s. Wow. So it's pretty easy. Just learn your label. I think that's the problem is that many of us didn't know our daily recommended dose. So it's 2300 for those without it. But if you have high blood pressure, then you'd want to be even less around the 1500 mark. And that's on the label. Yes. So you, should, you can monitor how much you It will tell you, you yeah. So for example, I may say 50% of your daily intake, but if you look next to that, it will say a milligram m amount. We had a question from Carol earlier um, that I want to get to, and she's reading labels. She's been diagnosed with high blood pressure, and she noticed that there's a lot of sodium in fresh spinach. Um, I was surprised by that too. Yeah, and so it's hard because that sounds like something that you'd want to be eating. So I actually, it depends. She said fresh, so I'm assuming that that's where she got it, but I think people will get the bat, like packaged, and sometimes they may, again, preservatives. Right. So I think if it's truly, truly fresh, it does have more than a typical vegetable, but it's not going to make a huge difference in that 23 to, or 1500 milligram. And just to let me back up a bit, because what is the overall problem if someone has high blood pressure? What risk does that put you at for happening inside your body? That's okay, good. I'm glad you asked. So the pressure, I like to explain it as you have to perfuse all your organs. So your brain, your liver, your kidneys. So if there's high pressure, it's actually the opposite of what you would think with high pressure perfusing. Mm -hmm. It's more or less constricted and the blood is not getting to your vital organs. So people who are on end stage dialysis, many of them have had high blood pressure. Mm. Um, sometimes there's other issues as well as diabetes, but without treating blood pressure, you can enlarge the heart. Your heart is working harder, just like any other muscle of the body. So if your heart is working hard every day, then the heart can restructure and actually become big. And that term is called cardiomegaly. So someone might be doing all the right things, um, but their organs and their body still not being refreshed like it should be. Yeah, so basically. that's when we would want to come in and, and help out. And just adding a low dose diuretic, people call it a water pill, mm -hmm. can be enough to get the pressure down into mm -hmm. a safe range. And that is, that's an important step to be taking. Mm -hmm. It's not something to be taken lightly, I guess we should say. Absolutely. Yeah. And once again, just to reiterate, there are people that come into your practice that come in with high blood pressure and high cholesterol at the same time. Oh, yeah. But there are things you can do to handle. Yep, we'll try to tackle it try to tackle as much as we can in one visit, but also step by step so we don't overwhelm people. Yeah. Because I know it can be a lot. It can be a lot. And I think people also might want to remember that it's not going to happen overnight and it could take an That's, extended period of time. And I guess I want to point out too with blood pressure is that I see a lot of frustration in patients when they have to take multiple agents. Mm -hmm. and they're like, why am I on three blood pressure pills for one thing? And I have to explain to them that each blood pressure pill works in a totally different way. So I talked about the diuretics flushing you out. So your heart is working against less vascular volume. Okay. The other mechanism, you can do a calcium channel blocker and that actually dilates the arteries so that the heart doesn't have to push as hard. So they all work so differently. So it's not a bad thing necessarily if you're on multiple agents. It means that your blood pressure is a little harder to control, but we're we're helping it in different ways. And it just makes it sound again like it's not something that you could really manage on your own yeah, very easily. At a certain point, it can be really difficult. If your blood pressures that are in the 130s to 180s range, that's kind of the range where you do have the upper hand, you can take control of that. But I'd say if you're pushing 140 or higher, then it's you may need a medical professional. And what about age? Does that, is that a factor for high blood pressure? I got a question from Angela on here uh, on the Facebook Live page where she's asking whether going through menopause might cause her to have high blood pressure, if that's an issue. So yeah, menopause can cause a whole bunch of symptoms for women. So hormonal changes are, I and mean, hot flashes, everything is just tough during that time. So not so much directly, but there is a change in estrogen so estrogen keeps the heart healthy. So women who have had maybe a hysterectomy at a younger age in their mid to early 40s 
we do watch their blood pressure and everything earlier because their heart health is at risk. So it's important for the patients to go over their medical history with you when they come in. Yeah, so they're not just here with their primary care just to talk about blood pressure and hypertension. We want to know about your women's health and same goes for the males because testosterone therapy that may be prescribed for, from the urologist does play a role in what we would need to know. Important information from Jordan Jersey, a certified registered nurse practitioner with GBMC Health Partners, joining us this morning here on the WMAR2 Facebook Live page. Is there anything I didn't ask you this morning about high blood pressure and cholesterol that you wanted to talk about? Hmm. Well, let me think. How can they get There's... in contact with you if they have questions? Sure, so we have a new online portal. So if they go into our website, uh, GBMC Medicine for Adults, mm -hmm. then they can see how to log in and I don't know that they have to log in right away. They may be able to set the appointment right then and there, oh, wow. um, but I know that they'll enter some insurance information. To make it easy on yourself, just give us a call. Our number is 443-849-2397 and our front desk will get you set up right away. Friendly office setting over there at GBMC? Everyone's great. We all work <laughs> as a team. It's a smaller practice, so I actually think that's good for our patients. You really get to know people when you come in from the front desk when they greet you up until the end. And we do have, as well as all of the health partner offices now, we have psychiatry and a counselor on hand. So I think that's a big thing I want to push for my patients because stress can up blood pressure and sometimes we have to target more than just the cardiovascular health and we have to do the mental health as well. Treating the whole patient. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jordan Jersey, thanks so much for coming in this Thank morning. You. I really appreciate it. That's going to wrap up our Facebook Live discussion this morning, but it's going to stay up here on the WMAR2 News Facebook page. If you have any questions, feel free to write in. We'll make sure she gets those and we will send those answers along to you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.